Hello students. Today we will learn about apomixis. Let's first see about the definition of apomixis. Now see the term apomixis was first used by Winkler in the year 1906. It is the development of seed without fertilization. So what is apomixis? Apomixis is the development of seed without fertilization which in other words it can be said that this process does not involve sexual fusion for development of seed. We know that for the formation of a seed there must be fusion of male and female gametes. But apomixis is the process where seed is developed but without the fusion of the male and female gametes. It differs from amphimixis. Now amphimixis is the opposite term for apomixis. Amphimixis involves union of male and female gametes for development of seed. Okay, so what is apomixis? Apomixis is the development of male and uh, seed without the fusion of male and female gametes, and the opposite of that is known as amphimixis. Now, here is a table given below which states the differences between apomixis and amphimixis. Let's say this. So, the first <coughs> point is term first coined by okay so apomixis term was first coined by winkler in 1906 but amphimixis was coined by wiseman in 1891 sexual fusion or union of male and female gametes in apomixis it does not involve any sexual fusion but in amphimixis it is involved third point is about the gene combination or gene flow in apomixis there is no gene flow or gene combination but in amphimixis there is possibility or there is gene combination or gene flow fourth point is about the segregation does there is segregation of genes no in case of uh, apomixis there is no segregation but in case of amphimixis there is okay what type of reproduction takes place in apomixis asexual and in amphimixis it is sexual frequency in plants and apomixis occurs at low rate in plants whereas amphimixis which is the common it occurs at high rate in case of plants okay so this page was about the definition and differences between apomixis and amphimixis all points are important now let's go to the second page the second page is all about classification of apomixis now apomixis is classified into various groups on different basis so the first basis is on the site of origin from the place of origin of apomixis so on that basis apomixis is of four types parthenogenesis apogamy apospory and adventive embryonic okay you have to remember all the four points so let's begin with parthenogenesis this is a quite common term as we all know and this term was coined by owen o w e n owen in 1849 okay now what is parthenogenesis it is the development of embryo from the egg cell without fertilization okay there is an egg cell okay this is the egg cell and normally what happens there is a male gamete which fuses with this egg cell and we get a zygote okay and this process is known as fertilization but in case of part uh, parthenogenesis a zygote or an embryo is developed from an egg cell without fertilization means from the egg cell only okay from the egg cell itself this is the egg cell and it will develop into a embryo okay embryo parthenogenesis is reported in several crop plants such as sorghum hordium cotton so you have to remember these examples and it has also been reported in some other plants okay so at least you have to remember two examples for this now okay up to this you have 
clear the concept about parthenogenesis what is parthenogenesis it is a development of embryo from the egg cell without fertilization who coined the term parthenogenesis owen in the year 1849 now parthenogenesis is having two types haploid parthenogenesis and diploid parthenogenesis okay first we will see about the haploid parthenogenesis it is the development of embryo from the haploid egg cell okay what is haploid parthenogenesis it is the development of embryo from the haploid egg cell this is the egg cell and it is haploid okay example hordium okay now another example is also given solanum nigrum so two examples hordium bulbosum and solanum nigrum are examples of haploid parthenogenesis this type of parthenogenesis is very useful in developing inbred or pure lines now what is a pure line pure line is a result of inbreeding where plants have certain characteristics that are same through generations okay so these are known as pure lines or inbred lines and these are Uh, means uh, very useful means haploid parthenogenesis is very useful in formation of this inbred lines the second type is known as diploid parthenogenesis so it's quite common it will be the development of embryo from the diploid egg cell in this case the egg cell will be what it will be diploid twice n okay now see sometimes embryo sac develops without reduction division okay the embryo sac sometimes may derive uh, derived without reduction from what from the megaspores all cells namely egg cell antipodals synergids in such embryo sac are diploid so in that case what we will get all the uh, you know the cells inside the embryo sac that is the egg cell the synergids then the antipodals all will be diploid in that case so it gives rise to what diploid embryos such embryo sacs will give rise to diploid embryos diploid parthenogenesis have been reported in grasses like teroxacum so these are the two types of parthenogenesis haploid and diploid i hope you have cleared the differences between the two now we will see about the causes of parthenogenesis why does parthenogenesis occur why it is so that without fertilization uh, an embryo is formed or a seed is formed there are various causes okay so number one is what inability of the pollen tube to discharge the contents inside the embryo sac now let us draw this it is what this is the female reproductive organ right so here we are having an embryo sac and it is having an egg cell here okay here will be the pollen tubes so this is a pollen tubes which is carrying two male gametes so let me denote it with green color it is having two male gametes okay now the first cause is that inability of the pollen tube to discharge the contents inside the embryo sac the aim of this pollen tube is to reach to the embryo sac and discharge its male gametes for fertilization with the egg cell first cause is that it is unable to do so or unable to do so okay second point is insufficient attraction between the male and female gametes sometimes it may be present that the male gametes may reach here up to the embryo sac but there is insufficient attraction that has to be present between the male and the female gamete third point is early degeneration of the sperm sometimes what happens it has reached near the embryo sac but before reaching to the egg the sperms inside the pollen tube degenerates early okay this is another reason then fourth reason is a very long style sometimes what happen the style may be very long okay suppose this much long and the pollen tube is unable to reach to the through the long style to reach the embryo sac this may be another point fifth is a short pollen tube suppose this is the 
normal female organ okay but the pollen tube is short so due to is short length it cannot reach up to the embryo sac six point is low rate of pollen tube growth everything might be normal but the pollen tube grows very slowly okay and because of that it cannot reach to the egg for fertilization at required time then self and cross incompatibility okay there may be self incompatibility or incompatibility or there may be cross incompatibility okay now let's move on to the second type of uh, second type based on the uh, site of origin okay it is known as apogamy first was the parthenogenesis and as you can see here in the list above okay apomix is classified into four types we have discussed about parthenogenesis now we will move on to the apogamy part i think the parthenogenesis part is clear with you all so moving on to the apogamy this apogamy term was coined by winkler in 1908 what is the definition of apogamy it is the origin of embryo either from synergies or antipodal cells of the embryo sac so let's draw one embryo sac here okay it will be having an egg okay two synergies and here will be antipodals normally an embryo is developed from the egg by the uh, fertilization of the egg and the male gamete but when the embryo develops from either from synergies this is the synergies either from synergies or from antipodal cells this type of fertilization is known as apogamy okay now it is having two types haploid apogamy and diploid apogamy haploid apogamy the development of embryo from haploid synergies or antipodal cells is referred to as haploid apogamy so when the antipodals and the synergies are haploid and they give rise to embryo it is known as haploid apogamy it is useful in the development of pure lines okay next is the diploid sorry next is the diploid apogamy it says that it is the development of embryo from diploid synergies or antipodal cells like haploid it is same in this case the embryo develops from diploid synergies and diploid antipodals okay sometimes embryo sac develops without reduction and thus all cells of such embryo sac are diploid as we have discussed in case of diploid parthenogenesis that sometimes embryo sac develops without any reduction division and in that case the whole embryo sac is or it remains diploid and all the cells inside it are also diploid so in that case also it leads to development of diploid apogamy just like diploid parthenogenesis just in case of parthenogenesis it develop from diploid egg cell okay but in here it will develop from diploid antipodals and synergies it is reported in allium iris etc okay now let's move on to the third type of apomixis on the basis of origin it is known as apospore in apospore first diploid cells of ovule lying outside the embryo sac develop into another embryo sac without reduction the embryo then develops directly from the diploid egg cell without fertilization now you see here what happens in apospore diploid cells of ovule outside the embryo sac okay so this is the ovule okay and here lies the embryo sac now all the cells outside all, all the cells outside the embryo sac are here diploid all these are diploid cells okay and from this diploid cells a new embryo sac is developed okay it will give rise to a new embryo sac so this embryo sac will be diploid okay the embryo then develops directly from the diploid egg cell so this embryo sac will be having a 
deployed Excel and this deployed Excel will develop into a what embryo it will develop into an embryo and this type of embryo formation will without fertilization is known as apospore you see this what happens in apospore the deployed cells surrounding the embryo sac in an ovule develops into a new embryo sac therefore all the cells of this new embryo sac will be deployed okay including the egg cell that type of egg cell deployed egg cell which develops into an embryo directly is known as apospore since it is deployed already that means and it is without fertilization so this is a kind of apomixis the term apospore was coined independently in 1886 by d very and bauer okay now apospore is also of two types but here the names are different one is generative apospore and the other is somatic apospore now what is generative apospore the development of embryo from the embryo sac that has originated from the cell of archisporium is referred to as a generative apospore okay now generative apospore is the process where an embryo is developed from the embryo sac that has originated from the cells of archisporium okay it is known as generative apospore it is reported in case of parthenium but in somatic apospore the embryo develops from the embryo sac that has originated from the cell of either nucellus or integument so it is the difference is on the basis of site of origin as you can see in generative apospore embryo develops from that embryo sac which is originated from the cell of archisporium okay but in somatic apospore the embryo develops from that embryo sac which has originated from the cell of either nucellus or either integument okay these are the differences between generative and somatic apospore somatic apospore is common in alium opuntia etc on to the fourth type of apomixis which is adventive embryony what is this the development of embryo directly from the deployed cells of ovule lying outside the embryo sac belonging either to nucellus or integument is referred to as adventive embryony so what is an adventive embryony adventive embryony is the development of embryo directly from the deployed cells of the ovule okay suppose this is the ovule and all the cells outside ovules are deployed so these are the deployed we can consider this green color as a deployed cells okay so lying outside the embryo sac this is the uh, okay we can consider this as the embryo sac okay and outside the embryo sacs all the cells of the ovule are deployed and these cells will be belonging either to the new cellus or to the integument so new cellus and integument all are deployed and the embryos arising directly from these deployed cells is known as adventive embryony okay this term was coined by stress berger in 1878 so these were the four types of apomixis based on the site of origin let's do a quick revision on this first was the parthenogenesis which means the development of embryo from the egg cell without fertilization okay second was apos apogamy which defines it as the origin of embryo either from the synergids or antipodal cells of the embryo sac okay then third was the apospore here what happens a deployed the deployed cells of ovule lying outside the embryo sac develop into another embryo sac without reduction then the embryo that develops directly from the deployed egg cell of this new embryo sac without fertilization is known as apospore okay all these types have its subtypes then the fourth 
and the last one is the adventive embryo what does it say the development of embryo directly from the diploid cells of ovule lying outside the embryo sac belonging either to nucellus or to integument is referred to as adventive embryony okay so this was the classification of apomixis on the basis of site origin now we will move on to the classification of apomixis on the basis of occurrence it is of two types one is the recurrent apomixis and the other is the non recurrent apomixis so first let's see about the recurrent apomixis where apomictic lines are obtained from generation to one generation to another it is known as recurrent apomixis so what happens in this type the apomictic lines which are formed as a result of apomixis it can be found from one generation to the next that means it is repeating itself this is known as recurrent apomixis what are its characteristics first is that the embryo sac develops from diploid cells without reduction in chromosome number in recurrent apomixis the embryo sac which are developed from the diploid cells without reduction in chromosome number okay second is the plants have diploid chromosome number the plants will be having diploid chromosome number such plants are always fertile okay it is of three types diploid parthenogenesis diploid apogamy and apospore now don't confuse this with the previous type which was based on the uh, site of origin we are now discussing about the type of apomixis on the basis of occurrence okay one is recurrent and the other is non recurrent recurrent means it occurs repeatedly from one generation to the next generation okay recurrent apomixis is of three types what are the types diploid parthenogenesis diploid apogamy and apospore okay we know the definitions of this type as discussed earlier now we will go on to the second type non recurrent apomixis when the apomictic plants are not obtained from one generation to another it is known as non recurrent apomixis from the term non recurrent we can understand this right that it will not repeat itself from one generation to the next now what are its characteristics embryo sac has usual haploid cells okay plants produced are haploid and sterile includes haploid parthenogenesis and haploid apogamy so it, there are two types of non recurrent apomixis one is haploid parthenogenesis other is the haploid apogamy so the characteristics are opposite to that of recurrent okay in recurrent we got the plant is having diploid cells but here they are having haploid cells in recurrent we have got that plants are always fertile but in non recurrent we have seen that plants are sterile okay in recurrent we have got three types in non recurrent we have got only two types okay now moving on to the classification of apomixis on the basis of frequency okay frequency means it will denote about the number of times one is obligate apomixis and the other is the facultative apomixis first let's go to the obligate apomixis in some species reproduction occurs only by apomixis such apomixis is known as obligate apomixis the progeny is identical to the the progeny is identical to the parent or the mother plant okay so what is obligate obligate means obligate apomixis means in those species reproduction will occur by only one method and that method is known as apomixis okay in such plants or in such um, uh, species the progeny or the daughter uh, plants will be exactly same to that of the mother plant okay next is the facultative apomixis it happens in those species where sexual reproduction also occurs in addition to apomixis we know that apomixis is a type of asexual reproduction so in plants where where along with apomixis sexual reproduction also takes place that type of apomixis is known as facultative apomixis for example in case of sorghum 
okay so this was the basis uh, classification of apomixis on the basis of frequency we got two types obligate and facultative okay clear okay now we will move on to the advantages of apomixis say this apomixis has several useful applications in plant breeding number one development of pure lines okay we have known what is a pure line apomixis is an effective means of rapid production of pure lines haploid parthenogenesis and haploid apogamy give result to haploid plants as we have discussed earlier which after colchicine treatment will produce diploid pure lines such pure lines can be used in breeding programs for developing high yielding cultivars and hybrids so this was the first point that haploid parthenogenesis and haploid apogamy are very much successful in production of pure lines and such pure lines can be used in breeding programs for developing high yielding cultivars and hybrids okay now we will move on to the second point it is conservation of heterosis now what is heterosis heterosis or hybrid vigor is the improved activity and survival of hybrid offspring okay now the obligate recurrent apomixis Re notice what kind of apomixis obligate recurrent apomixis is useful in conserving heterosis or hybrid vigor for unlimited generations what kind of apomixis help in conservation of heterosis you have to remember obligate recurrent apomixis okay apomixis does not permit segregation as we know hence heterosis can be easily conserved so this was another important point regarding importance of apomixis the third point is cheaper hybrid seed use of apomixis is the cheaper way of hybrid seed production it does not require crossing hence it helps in saving lot of money which is required for engaging laborers for crossing purpose in conventional hybrids for production of hybrid seed okay since apomixis produces hybrid seeds so it minimizes the expense of money which is generally required for engaging laborers for crossing purpose in conventional hybrids for the uh, production or synthesis of hybrid seeds so this is another important point then moving on to the fourth importance of apomixis we come here okay it is the maintenance of purity the obligate apomixis remember this the obligate apomixis means the type of apomixis where means the in those species where a reproduction takes place only through apomixis okay there those are known as obligate apomixis so the obligate apomixis breeds true for the characteristics of mother plant there we have seen uh, that its characteristic that the daughter plant is exactly same as the mother plant so it is very useful in maintaining the genetic purity from generation to generation yes or not since the mother plant and the daughter plant are exactly the same they are identical therefore the genetic purity will definitely be maintained from generation to generation and it can maintain a genotype for unlimited number of generations that means it helps in the maintenance of purity okay the fifth number importance is that there is no segregation apomictic lines always breed true to the characteristics of mother plants okay the hybrid seed is produced automatically there is no need of making crosses every year to produce hybrid seed since the hybrid seeds are produced automatically there is no need to cross them okay the apomectically propagated hybrid can be used as a variety because it does not permit segregation okay since it will breed true it can be used as a variety because there will be no kind of segregation in it so these were the importance or the advantages of apomixis let's have a quick revision on it first point was development of po lines okay second point was conservation of heterosis third point was 
production of cheaper hybrid seed fourth point was maintenance of purity and fifth point was no segregation okay now let's move on to the disadvantages or limitations of apomixis first is the genetic diversity now obligate apomictic lines have low genetic diversity since it is completely a pure line there is no kind of genetic diversity in other words apomictic lines are highly uniform as a result such lines have narrow adaptation and narrow genetic base okay since they are all uniform so will you find any kind of adaptations no there will be narrow adaptation and due to low adaptations they are adaptable only to a specific type of environment okay second point is a lack of gene flow now what is a gene flow gene flow is the transfer of genetic variation from one population to another apomixis particularly obligate type does not permit natural gene flow in the population okay mainly the obligate type of apomixis is does not permit the natural gene flow or the transfer of genetic variation in the population as a result recombinations do not occur in such population due to lack of gene flow there will be no recombinations third point is sexual reproduction sometimes apomictic lines are influenced by environmental conditions and they reproduce by sexual means it poses problem in the use of apomictic lines in plant breeding so sometimes what happen due to certain environmental pressures the apomictic lines they start to uh, reproduce by sexual means so in that case it will pose certain kind of problem in using those apomictic lines in the plant breeding programs right so that is another kind of disadvantage the fourth is problems with facultative apomixis it is easy to use obligate apomixis in plant breeding however use of facultative apomixis facultative apomixis means which reproduces both by apomictic and sexual means is difficult it becomes difficult to identify apomictic and sexually reproduced plants so this is another kind of limitation of apomixis okay and this is the last and the fifth disadvantage which says that adverse effect on seed industry now say the seed production is very easy in apomictic lines then seed production by sexual means as we have seen yes or no the farmers can easily produce their own seed and they need not purchase fresh seed every year from seed companies this will lead to reduced seed sale resulting in adverse effect on the seed industry since seeds are easily produced they are automatically produced in case of apomictic lines farmers don't need to produce them okay and as a result there will be a heavy loss or uh, there will be a heavy uh, you know there will be an adverse effect on the seed industry okay because of the reduction in the seed sale okay so this uh, was about the apomixis and its types and it is a very important note for exam purpose i hope you all could get my points thank you